Right. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about resonance um, in our second year course. Um, and we'll start just by reminding ourselves about this is the often really classic example is the carboxylate anion that's used to explain resonance, and it's a good one. Um, and we can show that the electrons that are on the oxygen can go in, form a new pi bond, and of course this pi bond has to break, and <clears throat> we get the other resonance or delocalized uh, intermediate. Uh, and some of the key things that are important here is this resonance arrow, special arrow that we need to use, uh, and we can also draw these curly arrows. And of course, in resonance or delocalization, these things must be able to go in reverse, all right? Uh, and we remember that the important thing here is that this is showing us a picture. And the picture is that the negative charge is not localized on either one of those oxygens, but spends half its time, or and that's even a bad uh, description because it's not just a pure negative charge, but rather that it's spread over to those two oxygen atoms over there. And so neither one of them has got a full negative on them, uh, but is effectively a partial negative. And that's what that picture is showing us. Okay, so we, you should have uh, learned this from, uh, from first year, and you should be able to do these sorts of things. I just want to take it one little step further and just have a look at um, what resonance means from an orbital perspective, because there's an important sort of consideration here that we need to, to look at. Um, <clears throat> and to do this properly is going to be a little bit difficult because I have to look at it sort of uh, from an angle, but I'm going to stick my eye um, down this way, looking at this bond, and I'm going to put the oxygen, the carbon, and this oxygen in a plane. So in other words, this is the carbon that I'm seeing, and if I had to look straight on, I would see something that looks like this over there. I've got the oxygen, the carbon, and the oxygen. Oxygen, carbon, oxygen. So this methyl group is actually directly behind this carbon over there, and we, we can't see it. Okay, so what do we have here on this structure? I've got a sigma bond and a sig sigma and a pi bond. So I'm not interested in the sigma bonds because sigma bonds are not involved in resonance or delocalization. It's just pi bonds and lone pairs of electrons. I'm going to just draw in the pi bond, um, just showing it with the p orbitals. I'm going to keep the p orbitals as part of that. So it's two p orbitals, and of course they are shaded uh, if there's going to be a constructive overlap. So those two are overlapping with each other, and that forms that pi bond. And we could draw it out a bit more carefully and uh, to show that. Um, but how does this negative charge influence this pi bond over there? And the reason that it does this is because that negative charge happens to be a lone pair of electrons, which is also in a p orbital. Uh, and we can draw that p orbital looking something like that. And so uh, what happens, although there's just two electrons in this orbital together when as part of the pi bond, there's also two electrons in this one over here. And as you can see, because they're all p orbitals, they can actually all overlap. In fact, when they overlap, we are able to form a new molecular orbital uh, and we can draw those out. Now, in this course, we're not going to need to be able to do that, um, so I'm not going to stress that to any extent. But the important thing here is to recognize that the reason that this negative charge can delocalize is because the p orbitals can line up with each other like that. All right. Um, so we can do a very similar example, just to stress this, uh, uh, this importance, by looking at an important, um, an important intermediate, and that is an allyl cation. So I've just used some words here which you may not be familiar with. So this is what is known as an allylic system. I'll write that up. Allylic. Um, and what we're talking about is that if we have m any kind of system that is set up with a double bond on it like that, um, and I'm going to put an R group over there, this position over here, the carbon that is next door to the pi bond is known as the allyl or allylic position. Um, and also carbons that have double bonds on them like this, and these are words that we should know, are known as the vinylic position or vinyl carbons. Right, so if it's carbon that's on a double bond, that's known as the vinylic. 
and a lilac is the position next door to a double bond. And this is really important um, words to know because if this position over here, which has a positive charge on this carbon, um, the reason we use this uh, lilac is it immediately conjures up this image of this structure, which is resonance stabilized because that pi bond can shift across to that side over there and the positive charge then ends up on the other carbon. All right, and so we can draw those arrows going backwards and forwards. So this positive charge, a carbocation, which is very unstable, is actually stabilized through resonance, and it is a common feature that allylic positions, which are next door to double bonds, uh, are uh, stabilized through resonance. Um, and again, we can look at this picture. If we're looking at it directly on, we can see three carbon atoms, uh, in a row, uh, and the two of them, so we look at this picture over here, two of them are part of a pi bond, which is part of these two p orbitals, which are overlapping with each other like that. And so there's two electrons associated uh, with that pi bond uh, like that. This carbon over here is positively charged. It's got two hydrogens on it. The empty orbital is an unhybridized p orbital. And again, I think if we drew this out, you can see how because they're all lining up like that, there's no difference between the, uh, the electrons sitting between those two orbitals or just shifting across and sitting between those two orbitals over there. The key thing here is they are able to align and they have to be able to do that in order for us to do our resonance. <clears throat> no resonance can occur unless the orbitals are able to align, um, which is that extra bit of information compared to, to last year. The last good example that I need to show just to show the converse of this uh, is an example of, um, of uh, pyridine, which is a molecule that looks like benzene, and it's very common in organic chemistry. Um, so we see pi bonds here, and we see a lone pair of electrons. And and part of our thinking is that actually uh, the lone pair of electrons might be able to delocalize. Um, so a first-year student might be able to say, well, I can take those electrons and I can put them into this carbon-carbon sigma bond and I can break this, uh, these pi uh, electrons and put the lone pair of electrons now on that carbon over there. And so they would draw this out and it would look something, something like this. And at first year level, they might not realize what they have done wrong. Uh, and this is very, very wrong, uh, the structure uh, over here, uh, and all this delocalization. And it's wrong for a number of reasons, but the most important reason is that that lone pair of electrons cannot align with the p orbitals that are in this uh, aromatic ring, this pyridine ring over there. Now think about it for a moment. This nitrogen is sp2 hybridized. These lone pairs of electrons are sitting in an orbital which is lying in the plane of this ring over here. They're flat in the plane. All right. The pi bonds, on the other hand, are actually, as we're looking at the structure, above and below the plane of uh, the, the paper that we're looking at. So it's above and below this plane. That means that these lone pairs of electrons cannot align like this. They cannot get into alignment, and it is totally impossible for them to uh, be involved in resonance. And at the second year level, this is the important feature that we need to take our resonance and delocalization to. Okay, so I hope that that makes some sense. Uh, in our lecture, we'll be able to look at examples of this and just start to cement those ideas.